This is the beginning of a series of videos where we're going to explore the notion of a differential form. And so the goal is to look at a generalized version of Stokes' theorem in the end. Okay, so let's start off with a little definition. So let's suppose that C is a curve in R2 and P is a point on that curve. So what we want to define is the tangent space to C at P and we will denote that by TPC. So that's the set of all vectors that are tangent to C at P. So I've drawn a little picture here. So we can think about this is our uh, plane R2 and notice we have this yellow curve here. I've put a point P on the curve and then my tangent space is really this tangent line. Although elements of this tangent space are vectors either pointing up in this direction of the line or down in that direction of the line. And so the line that I've written is really the span of all of those vectors. Okay, good. So let's rephrase a simple question from Calculus 1 in the language of the tangent space. So let's say we've got a curve y equals f of x. So we can maybe make a picture of that pretty easily. So let's say it looks like this, for instance. So this is y equals f of x. And we know that all points along this curve are of the form a comma f evaluated at a. Okay, great. So let's go ahead and appoint, put a point along this curve. So here we have a. And then the y coordinate of this will be f of a. And so this is our point P. Now the next thing that we want to do is get a handle on a vector inside of this tangent space. So let's go ahead and draw the tangent space right here. So the tangent space is like the tangent line. So this is T P of C. So what we want to find is a vector that is parallel to this line. Okay. Great, so the way that we will do that is we'll think about this as the starting point along the line, and then we're gonna pick another point along this line and calculate the vector between these two points. So that actually shouldn't be too hard to do because if we complete this right triangle and given this thing a nice length, like let's give this length one, then we know exactly what this, uh, height of this right triangle is and that is because we know something about the slope of this line from calculus one the slope is given by f prime of a okay good so that means we can put an f prime of a right here so if we look at this vector right here going from this starting point to this ending point we know exactly what that vector is component-wise. Notice that this vector component-wise is given by one is our kind of movement in the x direction, and then f prime of a is our movement in the y direction. And so now actually, if you think about this in a linear algebra sense, this tangent space is really the span of this vector. In other words, all real number multiples of this vector. Notice if we take positive multiples, we go up in this direction. If we take negative multiples, we go down in this direction. So in other words, we can maybe carefully write this TP of C in this case. So that's gonna be equal to the span of this vector one F prime of A. Or we could write it in this following way, which is just using the definition of the span. So this is C comma C times F prime of A. And then here C is running over all real numbers. Okay, great. So this is a nice calculus one uh, take on this tangent space. Okay, I'll clean up the board and then we'll look at some other stuff. Okay, now that we've looked at a little calculus one type example of tangent spaces, we want to look at this following pretty important question, and that is how do we differentiate between points on the curve and vectors in the tangent space? Because notice they both kind of live in this ambient space, which is R2. And we're going to do that by taking different coordinate systems. And so we'll have this coordinate system on the curve given in the following way. So this is going to be a function 
which has two components, x, y, and what it does is it goes from the curve to R2, and it takes points on the curve, so x, y, p, and it gives you ordered pairs, so x of p, y of p. And we'll write ordered pairs with these parentheses. And then we'll also have a coordinate system on the tangent space as well. And we'll use slightly different notation for that. So we'll use angle brackets and we'll use dx, dy as our component functions. And this is going to go from the tangent space um, of C to R2, kind of in the same way. And here we'll have uh, dx comma dy, and so that's going to evaluate on a vector v in the tangent space. And again, we'll get dx, the component function evaluated at v, and dy, the component function evaluated at v. So if you're keeping track here, we have x itself is really a function from the line to R1, and then Y is also a function from the curve to R1. And you put them both together and you get like a coordinate for a point along the curve. And then DX and DY are kind of the same thing. So DX is a coordinate function from the tangent space to R1. It gives you that um, x coordinate of the tangent vector and dy does the same kind of thing. So it takes you from the tangent space to R1 and it gives you the component of the vertical direction of this tangent vector. Okay, so let's go ahead and clean up the board and then we'll look at an example of these coordinate systems in ACT. So now that we've introduced the notion of a coordinate system, let's go ahead and look at an example. And so our example will be fairly simple. Let's say our curve is defined by y equals x squared. We can put that on the plane as just a nice parabola. So here we have, this is our curve. Okay, great. And then let's go ahead and say this point here, P, is a point along our curve. And now we can say that the coordinate functions, X, Y, evaluated at P. So that's going to necessarily give us something of the form A comma A squared. Because we know if we push this down to the x-axis, we can just set that equal to a, and then if we push this over to the y-axis, because we're on this curve here, we know that that's equal to a squared. So the next thing that we want to do is maybe draw a tangent vector in here. So let's say that is our tangent vector v, and let's scale this thing. So we can scale this thing kind of any way we want, but let's go ahead and scale this thing so the horizontal movement is 1. But notice we know that the um, vertical movement is equal to 2a because that's going to be the derivative of x squared evaluated at a because we're here at the point x equals a. Okay, so what that tells us is that when we take these component functions in the tangent space, dx, dy, and evaluate them at v, where v is this tangent vector, then we're going to get 1 comma 2a. Working with these component functions is often kind of a mouthful and a hassle, so we'll usually, usually simplify the notation by not referencing the component functions themselves. And for points, we'll just write x, y, in this case, is equal to a comma a squared. And so this is on the curve. And then for tangent vectors, we'll write dx comma dy, and we'll be careful to write that in angle brackets. So this is going to be equal to 1 comma 2a, which is in the tangent space at p. Okay, now the next thing to notice is that this careful choice of notation backs up what we've seen in calculus. And notice here we have uh, dy equals 2a um, times 1, but 1 is the same thing as dx, so that's 2a times dx, which tells us that dy divided by dx is equal to 2a. But that's exactly equal to the derivative at this thing evaluated at a. So in other words, we're replicating the ideas from Calculus 1 just in a slightly different setting. Okay, so I'm going to clean up the board and then we're going to look at one more thing. So let's maybe write it like this. So we know that R2 is equal to the span of these two vectors. So it's the span of 1, 0, and uh, 0, 1. 
Those are like the standard basis vectors, but that's equal to all points x comma y as x and y range over all values of r. So that obviously build, builds every point in R2. Another thing we can think about is what about TP of R2? So in other words, we pick an arbitrary point in R2 and we look at all vectors that are tangent to R2 at that point. But that'll be every point, again, because R2 itself is flat. And so we'll notate this in the following way. We'll write this as the span and then we have um, angle brackets 1, 0, and angle brackets 0, 1, and then we'll write this as angle brackets dx, dy, where dx and dy run over all real numbers. Okay, great. But then what if we're at another point, q, so t, q, r, 2, what if we want to look at the tangent space at p and the tangent space at q? Well, we do something similar to what we did above, except if we've got two different points that we're worrying about, we often put a little subscript here, Q. And so here, dx, dy, and that just tells us that the base point for these tangent vectors is Q instead of P. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at a picture. And the picture that I want to look at is what if we have the vector 1, 2, and maybe it's based at the point 1, 1. So we would draw that in the following way. So we're laying out our R2 here. And so my base point here is 1, 1. So I can go over here to 1, 1, right there. And then I'm pointing in the direction 1, 2. So that's going to be one unit in the x direction and two units in the y direction. So that's going to be like this thing right here. And how you want to think about this is at this point in the xy plane, you have put another set of axes, which are like dx and dy axes. And here we've gone 1 in the dx direction, and we've gone 2 in the dy direction. Let's say we have the vector c, comma d at the base point a, comma b. So we would draw our real plane. We would point put our point a comma b on here. So this is like our base point. And then at that base point, we're going to draw a new set of axes. And these are our dx and our dy axes. And then on those dy and dx axes, we're going to go c units in the x direction, dx direction. And we're going to go d units in the dy direction. And then we're going to draw a vector. So that would be the vector given up here by CD based at AB. Okay, great. So I think this is a nice place to stop.